Mora Mora and welcome back to Culinary Role Playing and into the first session of NPC Adventures. So, in our session zero, we created our first player NPC, Bob, Bob the Potato Farmer. And we also did a little deep dive into our fantasy world, the land of myth that we are gonna take adventures in. And I remember that one thing we forgot to talk about is the weapon proficiencies and armor proficiencies of Bob. And because Bob is a normal human, there is not like clear distinction what weapons and armor Bob can use. But I would say this kind of this kind of basic weapons, which are like weapons that damage is maximum of D6, I think will be fine. Like we can use spears, we can use like axes, like basic axes, and we can use like daggers. Because those are like very commonly found all around. So I think that would that's fine that we can use that kind of weapons. Or maces basically because they are like a big club. And armor wise, I would say that we do not know how to use armor yet. So we have 90 gold, which is a decent amount. We haven't bought any equipment yet because we have just left our home, which is the old home. Shall we name the old home so we know like where we are from? Because we are a peasant, so we don't have like a, a royal last name, so we could be like Bob of New Mill, because we are from New Mill. So that's why it's important to know our hometown's name so people can address us properly. Let's take some imp inspiration. Let's take our oracle table and... Uh, there is some kind of story to this old little village that we come from. So let's roll an action and object. So that might help us a little bit to determine what is the name of our hometown. So the black die will be the column of the chart and the yellow die will be the row. Here we go, an action first. We have four on the column, column four, row three, find, and then an object. Find column five and row one. Find physical. So finding either like something like a stone or, or land, that could be physical, or it could be like strength. Something very, very down to earth, something practical. And it's about finding something. I know. It can be called the finder's field. Because it has been just this new lane area for new people, and it hasn't belongs to anyone yet. It hasn't been hidden, but it has been kind of on the side of the of the like the main road because the new mill has been the most prominent like agricultural area of uh, of the middlelands. And even maybe elven woods. I, I would say like new mill has some elven elven people visiting new mill from time to time. And there might be even some kind of scuffles or tolls happening between here. Or they might have some kind of treaty with the elves so they can freely travel from New Mill to Copper Reach and then into Farwatch, which is like the, one of the biggest areas of the Western Kingdom. Like we determined in, in our session Shiro, Zero. Like we determined in our session zero that in the Midlands there is two human kingdoms, which is like the Western Kingdom and then the Eastern Kingdom. So I would say that the Western Kingdom has some kind of peace treaties with the elves. Like they don't bother each other. 
that much. We are top of finder's field. Because we are from finder's field. And from finder's field, Bob started his adventure. And first, probably traveled a day on foot into New Mill, where Bob was able to find a cart ride or a coach ride. Maybe I think it was some kind of like a public coast ride that there were like other people as well taking this carriage ride into the Far Watch. So they first traveled from New Mill using the road down here and first went into, into Copper Reach and I would say because it's called Copper Reach the, and the, there is like mountains over here I would say they, there might be like some hills in this forest and there might be some kind of there could be even copper or some kind of metals that could be mined over here possibly that's why it, it's called Copper Reach because like this is the area that you can mine copper and minerals from, maybe, I don't know. And then from Copper Reach, the coach ride continued into Far Watch. And what we discussed also in the session zero is that we will use Morgan's Fort from Basic Fantasy. Basic, uh, Morgan's Fort is an setting book for Basic Fantasy, which is available for free from online. And I, th and I haven't like fully read the Morgan's Fort book, but I think Morgan's Fort was a really interesting location. So that's why I thought that maybe we can combine this into our own fantasy app. So within the far watch, I would say is this area, and in addition to this map. I would say there is a bigger town maybe around because now this is basically so let's be clear here is north and here is south because it's unfortunately upside down as we can see in the far watch so the ocean is on the left and north is over here on top so that means when ocean is on the right, north is over here and south is over here. It's quite big area. So I would say far watch is, let's just put it on the map right now. The town is definitely in the crossing over here or the crossing over here. Mm, let's just say because the old fortress is here, which is basically like a dungeon that we can possibly maybe explore. Let's put the town for simplicity's sake and for the practicality because the Morgan's Fort is over here. Let's say that the town is over here. And one square is 220 yards, which is, sorry, I'm a meter person. It's 100 and, okay, it's 110 meters basically almost. So it's not that huge of a castle. I would say this town is quite, because it is one of the biggest towns in western area, so it wouldn't be shocker if the town would be this huge, because then the area would be like 300 meters across. And I feel like that's, that's still quite reasonable. Now it's like 330 meters and it's like full of different town folk and people. So yeah, definitely. And then we, in addition to that, we have the Morgan's Fort over here. So Bob's coach is coming from north, which means now from the down of the map. And they come through the forest and then they cross this bridge. And while they are traveling over here, I think they can see the mysterious island next to the river or in the middle of the river and they might see some 
old long ruin the basis of an, like this huge fortress and i even and i think the coach is like very familiar with with the local area and is telling like all the people the coach that and now on the right you can see the old island fortress that belonged to a belongs to a society that has been destroyed a long long time ago now oh, interesting question was it a um, fortress that belonged to a um, human society or was it a demi-human society and i think that's an interesting question because that might that might heavily influence what kind of things we can find over there if we ever go there so i think odds are even and yes or no did this fortress belong to a demi-human society let's roll a d6 and find out three no so it belonged to an ancient human society and one other question that i would love to know about this old ancient fortress was it an was it like a society that just lived long before the western kingdom ever existed or was it maybe possibly an enemy of a western kingdom long ago and they came in into this western kingdom and basically like took over so it's like kind of like the old enemy of western kingdom so was it an old enemy of western kingdom again even the odds let's roll a d6 one no and so not only it wasn't an enemy i would say it was the western kingdom it was the same kingdom who created this castle but for some reason the western kingdom has abandoned it maybe there is some kind of curse or something that forced everyone out of the castle and that's why or the out of the fortress i mean and that's why they created morgan's force and the bridge has also been destroyed that we know and the coach driver also tells everyone on the coach like the bridge has also been destroyed in order for us to keep the dead away that haunts the place yeah so there are undead there and i think the coach driver still continues and yet there are still adventurers who want to risk risk their lives and go into this fortress to find I don't know, fame, fortune, whatever have you. At this point, I think Bob's eyes start to glare a bit and be like, yeah, fame and fortune. That is exactly what I'm looking for. Is the coastal ri ride overall uneventful? I will roll a d8. And if we roll a one, there will be some kind of encounter. It is quite well guarded and we are driving a coach which is quite fast so that's why I won't throw a d6 for example. So d8 1 we get an encounter of some kind. 7 okay so there won't be any encounters. We can just drive casually. I think we will go into the town first. And in the town, we will be get left off. And, and I think the Bob will ask the coast driver, Excuse me, uh, thank you for the ride. Uh, I am looking possibly to become an adventurer. I'm not certain yet what I want to do, but if I would want to find adventures and adventurers, where should I go in this place? The coach driver probably sighs like, <sighs> This is, this is definitely not the first time that somebody has asked the same question. So I think the coast driver just answers, Look, if you want to find other adventurers, just head into the Morgan's Fort. The Morgan's Fort has a bank, so that's why all the most wealthiest people live in Morgan's Fort. And there is also an inn for adventurers. But mind you, if you go into the fort, you have to pay some taxes. 
and Bob thanks the coach driver and pays for the ride. For now, now let's let's pay pay the coach driver. Sure. How much is a basic coach drive? Dun, 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 coach driving miles per day. Uh, we could go twelve mile, miles per day. And normally, when you create a hex map, it should be each hex should be like six miles, I think, because it's either six or twelve miles. How much is this whole area? Because one square is about the hundred meters, a twenty-nine squares and let's take a calculator 3048 yards how many miles is that one mile is 1760 okay it's only two miles from from cross and i think it's a little bit more from top to bottom so we are well within the six mile area if we go with six mile hexes so now we can say that one hex is six miles and i actually let's just write it here right now one hex is six miles we have been traveling 12 miles a day which means one day two day three day and now at the fourth day we have arrived to far watch so basically three full days but i think we have to pay for four days of ride which means i can't seem to find any there are not good options of how much would three or four day of coast ride cost but now we can go into basic fantasy supplements and we can go into basic fantasy's equipment emporium and we might get answer either here or even from the basic fantasy box so we have here general equipment, armor, weapon, services, coach gap per mile. So it's three coppers per mile. So you can travel 12 miles per day, right? Yeah, 12 miles per day. So it's three times 12, which is 36. 36 copper, which is three, let's just say it's three silver. So it's three silver per day and we have now traveled four days. So four times three silver is 12. So one gold and two silver. And are we so naive? Because I think Bob is feeling really confident. Bob has never had 90 gold in his person. Like never. This is like, this is like unheard of for him. So I think for for a moment, I think he has this kind of big spender fever. He feels like he owns this place and he will just give two gold to the coach driver and be like, rest. And, and the coach driver will be, will be like, oh, hey, big spender. Okay, so calm down but we'll be definitely really thankful for Bob from his generosity and we'll be like ah well good luck sir hopefully you find the adventure you're seeking and Bob will be like yeah I know I will I will make something out of myself and so Bob will walk into the Morgans fought. And I think the book says that it takes a few minutes. It takes a few minutes to walk one square. So it doesn't take a lot of time for Morgan. Morgan. It doesn't take a lot of time for Bob to come into the Morgans fort. And Morgan's fort is a big place as you can see. We have 25 different locations and the Morgan's Fort book actually provides this really cool multi-layered map of the fortress so we can see all the possible places the Morgan's Fort has 
we first arrive into the gate. From the book we can read, we are greeted by two guards of the Morgan's Fort. And there is also a scribe who is taking in everyone who arrives at the Morgan's Fort. And there are two different scribes, uh, one older individual and one younger individual. And it's usually the younger individual who is at the duty. A Gloring is the younger one. So let's, for the heck of it, let's roll which one is it. Oh, that is the wrong one. There it is. D100. It's 70% chance that it's Gloring. And 30% of the chance that it's the older scribe, Hobbit. And the answer is 07. So that is definitely, definitely. That is definitely chlorine. So this younger, very bookwormish looking, probably. I would say they have like a shaved head completely. And they have like this really nice mustache, and they are taking in. I would say there is a look, like a little line, and Glorin is there like writing down everyone who comes in. And after waiting a few minutes in the line, it's finally Bob's turn. And Glorin is probably waiting there like a name, and Bob probably just answers that. My name is Bob of Finder's Field. Bob, you say, Bob, Bob, Bob. Uh, you haven't been here before, right, Bob? Uh, yes, that is correct. Well, welcome to the Morgan's Fort, Bob. Uh, everyone who wants to, everyone who wants to make business or live within the fort, they have to pay a tax every month. And that tax is, I think it was one, one silver, right? A tax of one silver piece per person and one copper piece per animal, yes. So it costs one silver per month to be within this castle. And Bob will definitely just pay the tax. So we are at 87 and we have now nine silver. Bob has lived within the Western Kingdom, so Bob has Western Kingdom money. And yeah, and they just make the exchange. Bob gets uh, nine, nine silver back. So Bob, how long will you be staying at Morgan's Fort? Bob thinks for a second and is like, uh, I'm not sure yet. I came here to make something out of myself. Yes, good for you. So. How long will this take? <laughs> Do you have approximation how much it takes for you to make something out of yourself? <laughs> Bob thinks for himself and is like, let's start from a year? Yeah, uh, certainly, uh, wonderful. Uh, do you want to pay tax beforehand or do you will pay do you want to pay it month by month basis? Bob is like, um, Let's just start with this one month and I will pay when necessary. Uh, certainly. Uh, well, that's all for me. Welcome to Morgan's Fort. And I think simple enough, Bob is let in into the actual fortress. Almost immediately, Bob can see this. Basically all of these buildings first. And we have many interesting locations. We have three, four, five, eight, ten, eleven, seven. So what Bob can find is the bigger building first is a stable. So Bob can hear <laughs> the sound of horses, and there might be even some sheep as well. Like there are some animals within the fort as well for like emergency food and easy animal material to be 
consumed and used. So there are a few sheep and probably maybe one cow because they want to have milk within the fort. They are probably mostly for the people who live within the fortress itself. But anyway, there is a stable nonetheless. Then Bob can also see the bank, which was actually right next to the stable. It's this really square looking place, which is partially built within the wall section of the castle. And it states the bank of Morgan's fort. And Bob is like holding the big bag of money <laughs> that he has. And he thinks for himself for a second, like, hmm, maybe I, it would be better for me to find a safe place for this money. But maybe I do that after I have bought some basic equipment. <laughs> but there is a bank as well. Stable and bank. Then there is... So there is the, the general goods of Morgan's fort. When I'm looking at the doors, I think that is everything that Bob can see. Well, let's see the 8 and 7 as well. We have just residence, so we don't know what that is. And we have the stableman's residence as well, which is the owner of the stables. So yeah, and there is not a big hassle and bustle within the square of Morgan's Fort. There is a simple fountain in the middle of it. And then more Bob can also see the tavern and the inn in here. I think 14 and 13 was the tavern and the inn. 14 Iron Helm Inn and 13 Toothless Dragon Tavern. I remembered exactly right. So right here uh, I think can Morgan see any other like adventure type? I would say it's likely so I will take d6 again and Watch from my likely column in my chart to see What kind of people are here? One no and So not only can't pop see any adventures at all Why I would say for some reason, the tavern is closed. There is... Yeah, there, the door is closed and there is a sign that says temporarily closed. Interesting. I will actually add that in to our possible threats adventure. Add, uh, let's write it down here. Toothless Dragon Tavern. Yeah. Why is Toothless Dragon in closed? And I think Bob arrives to the square. Which, can we see the square over here? Yeah, you can kind of kind of see it. And Bob just thinks for himself, like, interesting. Why? Why is the tavern closed? This should be the one of the best times to start opening up. And I would say next to the tavern there is some kind of like... I want to have this kind of adventuring notice board, like quest board basically. Where we can also have some adventures if we want to or possible job offerings. So there is that. And I will roll a d4 and see how many like notices is on the on the notice board right now. Three. So there are some stuff we could do. So there is our quest board as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I know how we do this adventure thread thing as well. We can actually add this to be a like this. An extra thing, extra mystery, ready to be unfold. Nice. Cool, cool. It's all coming together. I think Bob first just thinks for himself that, okay, there is a lot of different things that I can visit here. And I need to go to the store 
and I need to secure a bed for this for the night. And I think Bob can hear his grumbling stomach as well. So Bob is like, maybe I should start to first to have some food and maybe see what's up with the tavern if somebody would know. Bob will definitely go into the Iron Helm M, right? Iron Helm M, yeah. The inn is operated by Lurin, older brother of Liana. The taverner's wife! Blood thickens, so we might get some actual information what happened. So the older, older brother of the taverner's wife is is the owner of this inn. The inn has a common room downstairs for which a tenant will pay one silver piece per night to sleep on a cot. There are four, four upstairs rooms, each containing a full-sized bed and having room for two additional cots. One cold piece per night is charged for a room plus one silver piece per cot. So if we want extra bed, it costs one silver. Okay. In also has a bath house. Really, really little more than a small room on the ground floor with a large bathtub in it. The innkeeper charges one silver piece per person to use it. Okay, I think that is enough information. So we know that this Lauren is the owner of this inn. But we don't know that, of course, yet. I think Pop arrives into this tavern and he can see Lauren behind the counter. Do they look worried? I will roll and ask from the oracles, does, does the owner look worried? And I would say again, it's likely that they do. It's really likely that they do. Five. Yes, they look really worried. So I think Lauren... I will actually add the name on top of the... So we now know that Lauren owns this tavern. And Lauren is... He is like walking back and forth and looks really, really nervous. And Bob kind of comes in and is like... uh. Excuse me, is this like a is this like a bad time or can I should I come in later? And Lauren probably like his focus is his thoughts are interrupted and it's like no it's fine come come in. What can I do for you? Well, I was looking for a room to sleep for the night and and do I understand correctly? And I think I think uh, Bob can see the bath house room, and there might be like a sign that says bath. And did I understand correctly that you have bath as well? Do you also serve food here? I would say this is like an adventuring in. It has kind of like everything. The food is not perfect, but they have something serviceable. Uh, certainly food can also be provided. So you would want to sleep here for the night? Or do you want a, a basic... What was it called? It was something... I haven't... Cot. Oh, yeah. Do you want a simple cot or do you want a room for yourself? And... And we were talking about Bob having this big spender high so I think yeah Bob will ask a whole room for for himself he definitely is like uh, how much for the room please well one room will be one gold please and if you want additional cards for possible uh, companions that is one silver piece per each cot Bob will just answer uh, one room with one cot is fine so here is one cold piece, and here is, and, this, and the path was silver piece. Thank you. 
and then <laughs> Bob opens the big bag and gives the silver piece as well. And what is a cost of a ration? I think that will determine... Well, let's go to the Emporium again. I think there might be a meal. Hide in the steel lantern, torchbearer, hiling messenger... Services at the tavern. I think they have common meal. Poor meal would be... Do they have good meals or bad meals? Or poor meals? Let's ask. <laughs> Why not? I think it's 50-50. Do they have good meals here? Three. Uh, no, they actually don't have, so... So it's only poor, like, porridge or something like that. So, uh, five copper pieces. I think Bob will just add another silver piece to go with the bath and say, just give me a pint of ale with the food, please. Oh, okay, coming right up. Some broth and like basic soup is brought to brought to him and he will enjoy his meal he will also pay right away from the room for the room and while while bob is eating are there any i would i would say that we kind of had this conversation that there wasn't like anybody he was like in his own thoughts so let's just say for now there is like no one here right now and while he is eating, Bob actually asks from Lauren, That tavern right next to you seems to be closed. Do you, do you have any idea why? And I had an inkling that because Lauren was also worried, it might be that the tavern keeper's wife is missing. That's why he is so worried. And if I remember correctly, also, yes, the owner, the owner, the tavern's owner, Garnoth, is also a retired soldier, so it makes sense that Garnoth would go look for his wife. So, yeah, Lorin sits down and says, Yes, uh, I know why the tavern is closed right now. Tavern's owner's wife, my sister. Liana has been missing now for two days. She was supposed to go gather some herbs with the with the herbalist of the Morgan's Fort. And they they never came back. We have posted for adventurers that maybe they could help find this too and hopefully they are all right gareth is a retired soldier so he went with the first party to search search the tube but right now nothing has been found and they are still out there looking for them they wouldn't i wouldn't say that they would have gone here because that's too dangerous nobody would go there they might have gone either these two forest areas over here, a little bit on the high grounds, or they went into the swamp to find some specific herb that is located within the swamps. So let's again ask from the oracle, yes, no, likely odds, did they go into the swamps? If the answer is yes, they are in the swamps, and if the answer is no, they went into the forest area. Answer is four. Yes, but. Interesting. Yes, but. The but is that only, only Liana is missing. The herbalist was able to run back and warn Warn the others and warn the fort because they were attacked by a group of 
Was it bandits? Was it monsters? Bandits or monsters? I would say it's more likely that they were they were kidnapped. Let's say even. Bandits or monsters? Yes, bandits, no, something else. Six, yes, and. So not only they were captured by bandits, they were captured by the most notorious bandit leader who resigns within this area of Farwatch. So somewhere here we we would even know that the bandit the local bandit king resigns somewhere here. I think they have seen like that in some of these islands they are quite certain that somewhere here the bandit king resigns. They know and that that, that now makes sense that the bandits attacked these two in the swamps because the bandits probably go with boats or this kind of like smaller one sail boats they can move with agile between these different river routes over there here but they have they are quite certain that the bandit king and the group group's camp is somewhere here and the two went maybe too little close to the next to the bridge because they know that there are not many people around here except few adventurers probably try to go over here but the bandits are smart they wouldn't dare to attack adventurers with full with full gear on and full weapons and i even think that there are some some boat traffic over here but that's why this is the best place to ambush different people so the two of those liana and and the herbalist were happened to be just on the wrong place and at the wrong time and the bandits saw their chance and kidnapped kidnapped liana but the herbalist was able was able to run back to the morgan's fort and one the others and i think Lorin maybe tears up a little bit when he tells this to Bob and says that I'm just really worried. Hopefully she's all right. And Bob is like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to gain some renown. Maybe I can find a group that is going for these search parties or maybe I can just find Liana myself. If I would find find her myself, I would get a huge recognition. And this is Bob's like eternal thoughts right now. But I will need some camping equipment, everything like that. Um, uh, thank you. For, uh, I'm sorry for your loss, Lauren. Don't say that. <laughs> Bob is like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I'm. I'm sorry for your. Unfortunate circumstance. Is it possible that I go buy some stuff and come back later? And he's like, go! Go! And Bob thinks that it's better to give a little bit time for Lauren to calm down. And I think Bob goes to this to the square and now it makes sense why it was so silent because everyone is probably searching for Liana right now. I think this is very, this is very uncommon situation, and then that's why like all the adventurers are nowhere to be seen. And now we know that one of the information stuff is that like the missing poster, and I think one of the posters also wanted. The bandit king but there's no picture because nobody has actually seen the bandit king yet uh next i think bob goes to the general store the general goods of morgan's fort and uh, let's see what does it say about the general goods here 
their local merchant Jero Lotera deals in all sorts of dry goods, all items on the standard equipment list. Not I including weapons, armor or livestock are available here at the usual price. So Jero was the name of Jero Lotera. And I think he has some kind of royal blood and he definitely wants to say his full name. So let's put it here. Jero Lothera. And Jero will probably greet Bob with huge smile and be like, Good day, my tra traveler. My name is Jero Lothera. How can I be at your service? And Bob will be like, um, uh, Good day, Jero. My name is Bob. And do you happen to have any equipment with you? Or traveling and such. I know that face. That is a face of an upstarting adventurer. Am I right? Am I right? And Bob is maybe like blushing a little bit. Like, I, I, I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> don't be modest. Don't be so modest. I know I can s smell the greatness in you. But if you want to be the greatest, you need to have the best equipment, right? Right? So let's see what we can come up with you, right? Magnets? Oh my god. You know what? I will do a quick sh shopping session. And then when I have cho chosen everything, I will just go through with you guys that what I bought. So you don't have to deal with all my buyings for now. So let's whew, skip the time a little bit and then you can come back and see what did I bought. Okay, welcome back. The shopping is finally over. And let's see what did I buy, shall we? Or what did Bob buy, actually? So, uh, after everything has been resolved, we have 38 gold left and why and three... Oh, sorry, that is a, that's electron pieces, right? So this should be here. So now after everything we have 38 gold pieces left and 3 silver pieces left. Our encumbrance level is at 9 out of 11. So we actually so we are actually almost fully encumbered. But that is fine. I could actually put here so so 11 is basically that we are encumbered and then we are over encumbered when we have I think should it be double our strength? Let's just add ten over there. Now let's just say let's just say plus five. This is our own home rule. So let's just say plus five to that. So that's sixteen. So after sixteen, we are over a comfort. So then we are like heavily a comfort. I think let's check those rules later. But for now. It's not that big of a deal because we are well within the first encumbrance limit. But what did I buy? We have now some bandages. We have rations for one week. We have one bedroll, so if we have to sleep outside, it will be not that terrible. I bought a, a region map, so it's easier for us to travel within the Morgan's Fort area. I also bought the flint and steel, of course, so we can light our torches and make fire. I bought some torches. Then uh, the book says that the general store doesn't have any weapons, but I would argue that they sell like basic knives. So knife works as a dagger, basically. So definitely, definitely they have some like common knives in there. And they also have some basics like traveling staffs, I would argue, so that's why I bought a staff as well. Knife goes very easily to Bob's belt, so that's why it doesn't take any encumbrance. And staff, I would say Bob is holding all of the time when he is moving, so it doesn't take any encumbrance either. Then we of course have Wotherskin that has water for three days. 
Then we have a cape, so it, it, it provides us a little bit of warmth, maybe hides us a little bit. I think it's like a hooded cape. Let's actually put that in as well. So we have hooded cape. And then I also bought writing ink and quill so we can make notations in our map and also journal so we can easily also map out like any dungeon areas or any local areas. We are not that like in basic basic fantasy and in OSR I think the basic assumption is that everyone knows how to read and write. So while we might not be a cartographer, we can do like very rough sketches of different areas, so that should be fine. After this shopping spree, I think Jero will look up and say, Oh, now you look like a true adventurer! And Bob is like, Yeah, well, thank you. I, I feel like I'm much more ready to anything and everything. And Jero is like, Definitely, definitely, now. Please. Remember, you can always come back if you don't die during your adventures. Because, let's be fair, most of you will die. <laughs> and Bob is like, uh, Yeah, sure, th thanks for everything. <laughs> and just leaves the store. And I feel like for the rest of the day, it has been a really long day of travel. Yeah, Bob just will go back into the inn. He has eaten... He will take some time to go into the path and reflect and I think he's thinking to himself like in the path like that. Ah, tomorrow will be the first day of my adventure and if I'm able to find this Liana I might have a chance to really become a notable figure. If I'm able to find Liana, that will be a perfect start for my adventuring career. And for the most part, I think we will just go upstairs after the bath and just put everything in order. Hide maybe his bag of money within the room and think about maybe I should take this into the bank before I leave anywhere and has final nice rest at the Iron Helm in before adventure truly starts and I think that is a perfect place where we can start our next session so lots of preparation lots of introduction but the Far Watch is becoming a lot more interesting place. And the Morgan's Fort was full of surprises. This was really fun. I really enjoyed this. Thank you for watching this and coming into this adventure with me. I, this, I have a great feeling about this. Again, like I said on the last episode, if you have some ideas, and especially now when we have some extra we have some extra information about the local area if you have any extra ideas or of what morgan's fort might include like if you have some random tables for me some encounter tables the morgan's fort the morgan's fort book has its own random tables but if you want to create me some that would be great anything goes really if you have some ideas some sketches of places or anything like that please feel free to send them in my way so I can possibly in integrate them in if, if possible. We will definitely continue from here next time when we will start our adventure. Actually, yeah, let's upgrade before we end this episode. Let's upgrade this one because now we know why Toothless Dragon is closed. Quest. Quest. Find Liana. That is our first actual NPC quest. Oh boy. 
I am so stoked, so excited. And I know we just basically did some introduction and shopping, but I'm, really, I'm actually really excited. This is going to be fun. Thank you for being here again with me, like I said. And, and if you feel like becoming a gaming culinarist, click subscribe down below so you don't miss out the amazing adventures of our NPC, Bob, the potato farmer. Hopefully I see you on the next episode of NPC Adventures. But for now, mora mora.